But hey, they just snapped the six-year losing streak against Bethany last week. Anything's possible. Now, I, you won't catch me on air saying they're going to win tonight. But Robertson Albrecht to kick <laughs> off for the Spartans. Well, we'll, we'll see <laughs> if Cameron. Yeah, I might get a couple. Changes. I might get a couple messages if I start predicting a case back <laughs> to loss. receive for the Wolverines. You've got some of your former Spartan cronies watching, making oh, yes. sure that. Uh, Make sure I stay loyal. I don't. Uh, oh, oh, interesting choice. Brandon Caffrey. Now, if I was a returner, On the return. and I've never been accused of being a kick returner, but I might have let that one bounce out of bounds there. Deb's never let you uh, line up back there. No, he used to during camp. We do the offensive lineman uh, catch. Punt he passes at the end of practice. The yard line, first I was never any good at that. You didn't fare too well. No, but they weren't used. They weren't lining you up wide in any goal line sets. No, unfortunately not. As much <laughs> as I tried and begged and pleaded, they would never give me the ball. All right, so Josh East back to work. Wesley schools in his left hip pocket. East slings it out to Drake. That's been oh, a favorite almost. target. Ball is loose, incomplete. Kevin Chris has thought that that was a completion Drake, that he the punched the ball receiver. out from behind. Coverage Let's see Kevin if the Chris's. replay shows he's right. Oh, Second down, 10 yards to go. I, it's tight. I'll stay with the referee on that one. That comes down to that ambiguous, quote, unquote, football move. Yes, that the NFL can't figure out yet. So, so Still best of luck to Chris's. us then, huh? Yeah. And they only have we have replay, but <laughs> officials don't really have access to it. Second and ten from the seventeen after the incompletion. This is schools. Wesley Schools carries the football. Nothing home. One or two. He's Gain of two to the nineteen. Stood up by Brian Victor there. Great play by Victor. And that's what I'm talking about. When you it's third down. When you're the first guy to schools. If you Eight want to stop to go. him, you're gonna have to tackle him yourself, or you're gonna have to hold on to him until help comes. Four wide. School's the only man back there. How much would Case love a three and out here? Oh, it'd be beautiful, especially burying them deep back. I mean, they have a good punter, but that field position would be nice. Grove City, one of six on third down tonight. And thrown in behind Caffrey. Looks He's like passing a little miscommunication there. We've Caffrey seen a lot the of that tonight. Receiver. Yeah, it's really – Grove City is usually a very, very disciplined team that knows their stuff, and really they don't make too many misassignments. Fourth down. So could be one of those as a younger quarterback. Caleb, it's break. Tough to adjust. In punt formation. Well, now Caffrey and East are talking about that route. It looks like from the, the body language of Andrew DiDonato that that was – Caffrey running the wrong route. Yeah, it looked like he was – the way it was thrown, right, it looks like up. he wanted him to back break to back there. Oh. Nearly blocked on the punt by Caleb Brake, and now it's a muffed punt. Ball is loose at midfield. Rabina lost it for a second, but he will regain it. it. Spartans with the football. Schuster almost at got the 50 in yard there and line. stopped it. First and dead. Oh. Luckily, Mario fell right on top of it. No harm, no foul. First guy there was Jas Jackson McFall, who has been covering a lot of territory <laughs> on defense and nearly had his uh, his name Fans, again in the, the box score on special teams. In just a moment. He Get had the ready. interception in the end zone in the first half. Grove City's version of uh, Travis Johnson, it appears. Saxton. Far side. Oh, a little good shimmy one, for a first down by Rubina. It's actually complete to Mario Rubina. Great play call. Get all the action showing right. Let Mario sneak right out there and hit him in the flat. And then got to make a guy miss. Mario does that beautifully. He has had his Martin number called down. quite a bit tonight. Haul up the middle. Good hard run by Zach. Yeah, Mario is really important that for Case to really carrier. find that second weapon. I mean, Sam Jenkins inactive tonight. Was a great leading rusher last year for the Spartans. But it's stop. important for another uh, weapon to evolve from this Case Western well, offense because it can't just be Drew DeColt all day long. And especially after down, Case graduated five of their regular receivers from last year. Justin Fan, Luke DeFrancesco, Joey Spitali, Giuseppe Orsini, Hunter Tullock. All part of the two all, deep. 
All yes. gone now. Oh, beautiful outside zone. Hall diving ahead, close to the first. Zach Hall. Trying to get around Parker Kilgore, and he'll move those chains. Now you see the outside linebacker, number 17, Nick the Kravick. Yard line. Does a great job there. He sees the action coming. It may not look like the most it's athletic Spartan play, first down. but he'll just go to the ground and cut that uh, lead block there from, uh, I believe it was Zipko or Glatz on the block. And when he does that, you just muddy that hole, and that really starts to mess with Zach Hall's read because that should have been another 20, 30-yard gain there. He's just plugging up that yep. hole by going to the ground. Just chaos is your friend when you're on defense. Little screen. This is Morgan, and they don't want to give him any sort of room. To oh, Colt. that was smothered. Morgan. Especially after last he year's game. I remember we talked to uh, Coach Dan Giannato Melville. before the game, mentioned Colt Morgan's career game against them last year. On the a lot of that was just based on screens and Second breaking down, a couple uh, yards tackles and getting in the end zone. That was Dan Melville on that stop. Colt Morgan had a lot of big games last year. One of them was against Grove City. Four touchdown receptions. Only four? That's on, Yes, only four. I'm sure it felt like about ten when you were on <laughs> offense that day. Second and nine. Saxton using his legs. Oh. Got to run now. Tucks and Saxon gets near the, the sticks. Third and short. Run out of bounds by Parker Kilgore. Smart play by Saxon. No need to force a throw. Also, no need to take a hit there. Just get a couple and Game get six out. Game six to the 17-yard line. Third down, three yards to go. So third and three from the 17. By the way, Saxton and Colt Morgan have connected now in 11 games in their career for 100-plus yards five times and multiple touchdowns five times. <laughs> You Sounds think he likes right. throwing to, to Colt Morgan? I think he likes him as a target a little bit. Donald Day off tackle right with room. Beautiful. Takes his third, carries the football. Beautiful execution of the outside zone. Offense line gets Game on the horses. The Donald 12. finds Yard his line. angle and just runs. The Spartan first down. Looks like we had a little leaker there. That 50-50 raffle winner from, is 7 uh, uh, I can't get a number on him, but D's guy. D moving out the tackle, running that outside zone. It's just a little different from the look you'd get as an uncovered guy from the guard. But like I said, D goes, you know, super athletic. Google Cloud, All-American second team. He's the right guy for the job. Moving over to take your old spot at right tackle from yeah, left guard guess. last year. Yeah, I guess. I don't want to bring it up too much. Still hurts <laughs> a little bit, but. Well, he didn't steal the job yeah. from you. you. You left for, you know, Life. academic <laughs> ineligibility. Yeah. <laughs> Another great outside zone. Meaning you graduated. Yes. yes. <laughs> an, another another name for that. Under 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. 28-7. Spartans in the lead. This is exactly what Case wants to do. They just want to keep their offense on the field, and they just want to keep moving the ball down. These sustained drives play after play after play. Looks eerily similar to the first drive of the game. Here's Day again. Cuts it back across the grain to the one. Oh. But See, got himself the first. And that play was set up by those previous two outside zones. You see how he starts seeing all that outside zone action. Everyone keeps falling across the top. All Donald does is put one foot in the ground and make way pay dirt. Boy, was that close. That was really close. Cameron Good on the stop. First and goal from the one. Here comes MGM for the oh, Wildcat. The MGM show. And Carney. So you have the speed and versatility of Mason G. Montgomery in it, Wildcat quarterback, and the raw power of Brett Carney. Oh, and it looked like we forced Grove City to take a timeout. Yeah, you see that different look. That quickly, they change personnel right before the snap. I think it's time, especially at this point in the game when Grove City really needs a goal line stand to make yes. sure you got all your ducks in a row. That's a good time out there by Grove City because you don't want to – I'm sure it came up in film. They obviously had film of the Rochester game, but you only have so many reps in practice. And when that's only shown a couple times, that might have only been like a 15-minute conversation during one of the periods of practice. 
Now, do you come out with the same personnel here, or did you throw that, if you're Debs, are you just throwing that MGM Wildcat look out there in order to force that timeout? It, it looks like it's the latter because Drew Saxton's coming out again. Yeah, or Coach Debs is uh, thinking even ahead and is thinking, oh, Grove City thinks we're going to come out with Mason. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to switch up all their stuff, and now we come back out with Drew. So I don't – Coach Debs is playing 3D chess sometimes. <laughs> I always just like to run the plays it called. Looks like we're gonna get a little quarterback sneak here. Right behind Brandon Ryan. Oh, beautiful push. Easy as you like for Drew Saxton. That'll be oh. his first rushing score of the year. That was an amazing push by Chase Strayer, Brandon Ryan, and Anthony Polizzi. That's reminiscent, reminiscent of the days when we'd have uh, Ryan D. Marina, Gage Buller, and uh, Ryan Merlau plowing the way for uh, Rob Kuda on the goal line. All right, so Case making it happen right out of the half. And they get another quick score. 35-7 to seven is Spartans. And the opening Case drive of this second half presented by Dave's Cosmic Subs. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Spartans 35, Grove City 7. The defense gets a quick three and out. And then a Drew Saxton quarterback sneak off a nice drive. Cameron Roth is stacked up right about at the 20 yard line. So Case up big early on in the second half. Case fans remember after the game, stop by the Jolly Scholar for 10% off after every Spartans game and get Jolly. Looks like we're gonna have a penalty on the play here. I think it might have been an offsides against Case Western. Or are they picking up that laundry? Anthony Lascola is our head referee. Oh, uh, you got it, offsides. Yep. They're gonna re-kick. We got that uh that referee mic for you, it's cutting in and out, but you could make out most of that. Again, Anthony Lascola is our head referee tonight. Case now has scored in just about every which way. Sounds good, Mike. Ready when you are. So as we re-kick, we'll take a look at our great crew tonight. Brian Trail, Brian Landers. On replay, Shayna Perlman. And Mike Becker tells us all what to do. Andrew Luftglass with you alongside Steve Bocci, former K's right tackle. Spartans up big 35-7 in the second half. Beautiful Low line kick. drive kick. Uh-oh, that's trouble. Cameron Roth having trouble with it. Scoops it up and wrapped down. Brett Carney. He still has some defensive blood in him. Still got to get after every once in a while there. Chase Whitty also coming down there to make the play. Fear Grove City, this drive is a must score. Because if you do not score here, you might as well ship it on home. Because Case, when they get up this big, this is where they're most comfortable. And this is where they have experience just stepping on that gas and finishing out through the fourth quarter. You got to score quick here too. For schools, no sir. The roommates, Andrew Lease and Isaac Winthrow making the stop. 
It was Lise who came in first, and then Withrow laid the wood. Lise is actually taking my old room. I'm a little upset about <laughs> it, but let you it got, slide if he keeps playing like that. You got all sorts of trouble. Lise taking your old room. D goes taking your old position. Who has your old number now? No one, actually. I was kind of disappointed. There's a tradition on case uh, they pass down numbers. You'll see it. Uh, Colt Morgan's were in 17. That was Joey Spitali. Josh Smith's got eight. That was Shannon Demery. I passed my number down to Brandon Ryan. and Little floater oh. intercepted. Here comes Kevin Chrisis. Stutter stepping along the sideline and inside the 10. Beautiful play by Chrisis. Let's get the pressure by Skyler to force the bad throw. Chris is just sitting there waiting for it like a punt return. Kevin Chris has had three interceptions last year, tying for the team lead. Two, including a pick six in the academic bowl against Carnegie Mellon. And he gets one here after, as you mentioned, the great pressure by Skyler Waitis. It gives Case the ball at the six. This will be real good. Just put the final. Case can score here. Grove City is going to find themselves in a lot of trouble. And this is looking like that uh, Spartan red zone offense with Donald Day the third and a running back. You've got Zipko in a tight end. Maybe we get a little outside zone action here to the right. There yep. you go. Good call, Coach. Beautiful Donald Day, Day is in. Beautiful execution, Donald. Second tonight for Donald Day the third. And a good play call by you, Steve. Yeah, you know, I, I know how to call him up. That was one of my favorite plays to run. Beautiful blocking. Donald, rep after rep after rep of learning and practice and getting yelled at. <laughs> yelled at kindly and, you Hopefully know. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> taught how to run the play correctly. And a couple past years of us turning around and saying, Donald, Run to where we're not blocking them. <laughs> Finally looks like it took home. Albrecht on the kick. Coolidge on the hold. Aurora, Aurora Ohio's finest, Robbie Albrecht. Well, and all those lessons for Donald Day the third have paid dividends. His second score tonight. Case off of the Kevin Chris's pick up 42-7, 8.37 to go in the third. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Well, a Kevin Chris's interception paves the way for a six yard drive. And Donald Day the third second score tonight. Cameron Roth on the kickoff reception at about the five takes it to the 25 before he hits a wall of blue and white. Looks like we have the number one defense coming back out for Case. Yeah, so we're not seeing the reserves just yet. 8.31 to go in the third quarter. So it's a big lead at 42-7, but still time. And Warren Miller wants to make sure he's got everything right where he wants it. Speaking of having something right where you want it, we should chat about a pretty big score in the PAC today. After this... Maybe, ooh, this is an interesting motion there. I haven't seen that all game today. Yeah, there's Roth. Spins away from a tackle in the backfield, and he has almost enough for the first. Depends on the spot. They'll give it to him. How about that look? That was pretty interesting there. I think it took Case off guard. A little lead blocking. Schuster. Looks like he got a little cold feet there, but he'll be all right. School's coming up to block yeah. Skyler Waitis. Miss blocking, running, you name it, he'll do it. He used to be a Wildcat quarterback in high school at Fort Jervis High in New York. That's kind of interesting term, Wildcat quarterback. Is that kind of just a quarterback who liked to run a lot in high school? 
little option, old school. Well, it was basically like an option quarterback. Yeah, that's what I was assuming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can be a wildcat quarterback if your offensive line isn't that great. Either. <laughs> that's that's uh, wildcat quarterback by necessity, not by scheme. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway, the score we were referring to before, Carnegie Mellon 20 and the number 12 team in the nation, Washington and Jefferson 13. CMU, as much as uh, Case fans loathe to hear it, won today, but uh, it helps the Spartans out, you'd imagine, quite a bit. Yes, it does, but it still doesn't change the objective and the goal. You're still going to have to go and beat W&J. The goal every year is 10-0, and or the goal every year is the playoffs, and the way you get to the playoffs is going undefeated. Now, that does open the door for W&J to go out and – maybe lose another and give the Spartans some room to breathe. But as we both know, there are a lot of rising teams here in the PAC, whether it be Mellon, Westminster, or this Grove City squad. Grove City hosts W&J next week. Here's schools for a first down on third and short. Yeah, I know we mentioned in the pregame, but they're going to go uh, – they're going to host W&J next week. Yep. And then I believe they have Carnegie Mellon. At home as well. At home. And then Westminster. So if you want to be and compete with the best teams in the PAC, those are the four teams you got to compete with. Almost kind of a initiation process after kind of turning the program around is running through the four blue bloods of the PAC. Yeah, we were talking to some Grove City folks earlier. They were saying this week is where we step up in weight class. Yes. It's a different level. Oh, nice little stuff there. Trusky on the carry that time as Wesley Schools gets a playoff. Just one playoff, it looks like. Well, no, let's see. Are they bringing in kind of a jumbo set here? Because Trusky is coming out. Tyler Beal, the fullback, is coming in. And Schools is back out there. A lot of meat on the field there for Grove City. They'll go right side. Good toss to Gustafson. He's got the football on third and short, and he has hardly seen the football tonight. That is actually his first reception this evening. That's a tough catch and pass because they're only running. They're protecting here with uh, – they have six guys in here protecting. Or seven, I'm sorry, seven guys protecting. And then you only run two routes. I mean, Spartan defense has got to be a little bit better, but that's great play by the All-American Cody Gustafson. One more reception for Cody Gustafson, by the way, and he'll tie Anthony Ritchie for third in program history. And two more to tie for second, tying Jeff Mateer. Won't get the ball here. It's Wesley Schools who knifes his way to a first down. And Schools, we've mentioned over and over again, one of the best rushers in this program's history as well. He is second all-time for Grove City in rushing yards, but I don't think he's ever going to catch R.J. <laughs> Bowers. Schools, as coming into today, 4,259. Bowers has 7,353. Oh, he, he could probably get 3,000 sure. this year. <laughs> <laughs> sure he can. Another fun one. He and Bowers have, between them, the top 12 Single game rushing performances in school history. That ball is loose. Schools is going to fall on it. There's also a flag down and a Spartan down behind the play. Brian Victor caused the fumble. He also got credit yes. for the forced fumble in the first half as well. Now, who is that down for Case? Looks like Travis Johnson. It is holding that left arm. A freak of an athlete is Travis Johnston. So uh, if he's hurt. It's it's serious. If yeah. He's, hurt. he's not a guy who's going to take some time off laying there because he's tired. Dangling that left arm and helped off the field. Hopefully that's just a There's no a foul for a legal block below the waist. The action occurred within the four-yard belt of the line of scrimmage. Okay. Uh, Second down. I guess. Now, Travis, fun story about Travis. We used to uh, go and work out. My junior year, we had a different workout program where we'd work out in smaller groups. And me and a group of guys would go into the weight room 
every day at like 7 in the morning, and we thought we were the real early crew, Travis Johnson would be finishing his workout <laughs> as we were coming in because he would get there right when the weight room opened. Oh, beautiful catch out there. That is Gustafson, who now with that reception ties Anthony Ritchie for third in program history in receptions. Travis's roommate actually called him the old man because on days when he doesn't get up and go work out, he still wakes up, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, drinks his coffee and reads the <laughs> newspaper on his uh, computer. <laughs> does the crossword? Oh, I'm sure he does. Deb's told a good story about him too, about uh, you guys playing pickup basketball and he just kind of came out of nowhere and dominated the whole team? Yes. Pick up basketball in the uh, winter time for uh, the Case Western football team is very serious. Uh, we have an offensive line team that's not very good. <laughs> but uh, my junior year, actually a group of freshmen, which at the time Travis was, him, Skyler, MGM, Brian Victor, and Josh Klopp, also Colt Morgan, were all on the team, and they won the entire, uh, I think it was like 42-plus team bracket which included medical students. Now here's East going end zone. Gustafson hauls it in for six. That's a grown man play there. Watch him. Schuster could not be on him anymore and pulls it in. Schuster might be a little bit too familiar with that happening, covering Colt Morgan in practice, but... Cody Gustafson's 23rd career touchdown reception as Morrow shoots that one through the uprights. And for Gustafson as well, it is his 145th career reception tying him with Jeff Mateer for second all time in Grove City history. And it puts Grove City on the board for the first time since their first drive of the game. Case 42, Grove City 14, 319 to go in the third quarter. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Case 42, Grove City 14. Cody Gustafson had three receptions on that drive. All three of his receptions in this game on that drive. And the last one into the corner of the end zone for six. That ball just barely hooked around the pylon for a touchback instead of a legal procedure. Yes, about one yard short of having a plus 25 yard advantage for the Spartans. Thing had eyes. So let's see what Case comes out with here. It's going to be Ryan Coolidge under center instead of Drew Saxton and will likely be the last offensive drive of the third quarter. Even after a touchdown, are you surprised by this, Steve? No, not at all. I, I expected this, uh, mostly because I saw him warming up on the sidelines, but this is about time. I mean, even with the score, you're still got double-digit touchdown or double-digit lead, so don't need to get Drew hurt. Primary backup the last two years, Ryan Coolidge. He's going to go down on his first play from scrimmage. Senior from Chicago out of St. Ignatius Prep. That is Looks St. Like Ignatius in Chicago. Yes, triple option quarterback. Looks like we changed up the offense line a little bit too. Looks like Klontz switched out for Josh Blamer at left tackle, and Josh Schlichting is in at right guard for Anthony Polizzi. Coolidge in the shotgun. Still Ryan under center, and it's a high snap. It's going to be Coolidge to dive on it inside the 10. 
So good to get the second unit some game reps, but uh, they'll need to clean things up a little yes. bit here. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that was Brandon Ryan snapping that ball, and that doesn't happen a lot with uh, Specs. I heard uh, he might have been a little banged up earlier in the week because they were shuffling the little guys around, but that might be a product of that. But you just got to snap the ball. That's your first job as the center. Third and 26. That's just going to be a little give. Kyle Trufkowski. And so that will bring up fourth down. By the way, as Case brings the punting unit out, you're going to have to explain calling Brennan Ryan Specs to the listeners. <laughs> oh, Brennan Ryan is Specs to me and mostly everyone on the team. He, uh, put it lightly, he's probably pretty close to almost being legally blind. So he always has to have his glasses on. Naturally, when you play football, probably not a good idea to wear glasses. So I don't know if you ever heard of Rex Specs. Yes, of course. Which they look like goggles. But Specs took it to the next level with his Rex Specs, and they uh, are tinted, almost like sunglasses. <laughs> so he comes walking out his first day of practice as a freshman. And we used to have an offense line coach who just left last year after 40 years of coaching around everywhere. He... uh. He sees him coming out and, you know, first day of freshman, first day of practice for freshmen, one freshman always gets picked up to uh, take the stretching bands in and out from practice. So none of the upperclassmen have to worry about it. And he's talking. He's like, I don't know who I'm going to pick. I don't know who I'm going to pick. And there comes Specs with these nice <laughs> Rex Specs on, all shaded up already. And if you notice, he has the, uh, the skull cap on too, had that on, and it was just automatically anointed Specs. Does he wear the tinted rec specs for night games too? Uh, yes, he does. I don't think he can. I think they actually might be transitions. Are they? Yeah, so that would make some sense. Yeah, I put him on one time after uh, – I'm sure he's going to listen to this and get mad at me. But <laughs> one time after we were done lifting, uh, he wasn't there. I put him on. I tried to walk around, and it was actually pretty difficult. Yeah, don't play a game in those, Steve. Yeah, it would, no, it would be not, not very good. Under a minute to go in the third quarter, second and 11. See if we can dial up a pass here. We've had some success. East fakes the handoff, tucks and runs on second down, and Ooh. he is met right at midfield. Stood up there by Michael Amadio. Uh, he met Amadio and said, thank you very much, he kept going there. But luckily Amadio held on and Looks like he got some help from Adam Poltrak there. Adam Poltrak, another great DN for the Spartans. Real long, lengthy. Used to go against him just about every day in practice as he was a scout team uh, DN. Let's see if they run one more play before the end of the quarter. Doesn't look like it. Nope. So the fourth quarter will start with a third and five for Grove City. A case up 42 to 14 in the home opener after three from Cleveland. With 31 unique creations to choose from, there's something for everyone to love at Dave's Cosmic Subs. Meat lovers, vegetarians, and everyone in between agree that our freshly baked bread, high quality ingredients, and homemade sauces make us the best in Cleveland. Come on into Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry to experience legendary subs in a cosmic atmosphere. And don't forget, we deliver. It's as easy as dialing 216-320-0330. Be the hit of the party. Order Dave's. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4. 300 or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. Start of the fourth quarter presented by Inova. Case up 42-14 and Grove City on third and five. We'll hear the whistle blow. They'll reset things. No flag flying no. here. They just want to talk about what they're doing after the game. A lot of good places to eat around town. 
Maybe they'll be going to Rascal House. They're our sponsor of our player of the game, which Steve will have for you after the final whistle. Let's see what we're talking about here. Can't be the clock since we're starting. Oh, here he is. Please reset the game clock to 15 minutes. Play had not oh, it started can't be yet. The clock, play hadn't huh? been oh. blown ready for play yet. <laughs> My bad. You never assume. Well, it was, it was at 14:59. That's really think, need uh, that second. I think uh, we all would have been worse off losing that one second. East for Gustafson, and now as he's dragged down by Colin Schuster past the sticks for a first down, we get a flag flying. That's never a good flag. Oh, push off. Never mind. I'm open okay. too, this drive. You and this officiating crew need to get on the same page. Pass interference, number 80, offense. 10 yard penalty, third down. Me and officiating crews, so <laughs> we're rarely on the same page. A lot of times they said I was holding people, or I thought I was just blocking them, but. Who am I to say? That's just the life of a tackle. Yes, you're out there on an island, you're exposed. Then when you get freak athletes like Cam Brown coming after you, it's a couple times it was you get beat off the line, you look back and you're like, well, this guy's either going to have a free shot on our franchise quarterback, whether it be Rob or Drew, <laughs> or I could take 10 yards and get a chewing by Coach Depp. So most of the times I just took the chewing. <laughs> And I'm sure Rob and Drew thanked you for it. Oh, yes. Rob always would mention, he says, just hold him. I don't care. We'll get it back <laughs> to the next play. Oh, a little movement. Right side. Who was that? Was that Sam Michelet at right guard? I believe that was Matt Villers. Okay. Left guard. So two penalties in a row. That'll... Back you up pretty well. Yep. It's a pretty big Grove City offense line. Really experienced Grove City offense line, too. I think combined between them, they have 108 starts. Four of the five are seniors. The other, the right tackle, Sherrod, is a junior. Deep ball, Drake, too far. Fourth down on uh, third and 35. So here comes the, the punting unit. Yeah, from uh, left tackle... To right guard, Sal Spinoza, Matt Villers, Jeff Matthews, Sam Michele, all seniors. And Spinoza, Villers, and Matthews have all been starting since they were freshmen. Mm -hmm. And then Michele is a second-year starter at right guard. And Sherrod uh, spent his first year at right tackle, last two at guard. And now he's the junior starter at right tackle. So they have some experience up front. Oh, that one's blocked. Schuster. Who's got it? A race to the goal line and the football. Picked up by Brake, Caleb Brake, the punter, falls on it at the one, beating Josh Smith to the football, but here comes Colin Schuster flying in. <laughs> he knew how close he was last time. He said, all right, I'm just going to put a little more gas in the tank and see if I can get there quicker. Josh Smith almost got it. Wow. Ooh. Well, you cannot get much better field position than starting on your opponent's one-yard line. Last year, or last week, uh, a Caleb Brake punt against Bethany pinned their opponent on yes. the one, and now the field is flipped. The law of averages. And Ryan Coolidge under center. A little outside zone action, yep. Tarkovsky in there. You're two for two on calling plays from uh, inside the five, Steve. Yeah, I know. It's almost like I've ran this offense <laughs> a couple times or not. You know, if you're not on the same page with the officials, at least you're on the same page with Derek <laughs> Slash. Yes. Oh, beautiful execution. I mean, nice to see Turk get in the end zone. Guy really works hard, been injured a couple times throughout his career. Had a heck of a game at W&J last year from a blocking standpoint. So nice of him to get in the end zone. And Robertson Albrecht remains perfect on PATs for the year. Case 49, Grove City 14 on the Kyle Tchaikovsky one-yard run following the Colin Schuster block punt.
in search of it. The Holiday Inn Cleveland Clinic is the preferred partner of CWRU Athletics. Mention CWRU teams when booking your next stay. Case with a 49-14 lead over Grove City. One yard run by Kyle Turkovsky following the Colin Schuster blocked punt. Hey Case, doing pretty well on special teams the last couple weeks. That's first two weeks of the season, first two games of the season. Two blocked punts, one by Schuster, one by Travis Johnston against Rochester. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the last block punt would have been uh, the 2017 Academic Bowl where uh, Zach Lyon blocked the punt and sent the game to, well, overtime eventually. Oh. That looks like it's uh, Marcus Woodford hurt on the play coming off the field after that return. Grove City's going to go back to work on offense. You know, I, I'm not sure if uh, if that was the last block punt, but it certainly is the one that sticks out in your mind the most. That was one of the most entertaining games, at least in the Greg Debelak era of Case football. What was it like for you to be a part of that? That was an emotional roller coaster. One of the real staples of uh, Greg Debelak teams, and especially when we've been real good these past couple years, or Case has been really good the past couple years, is they don't ride the emotion of the game. There's no emotional highs or lows. It's always, I go out there, I do my job, I get it done. That's it. You know, we go out there, we didn't have a great play. All right, bury it, next play. That game is the one game I saw people really riding those highs. I mean, a lot of those seniors, that class of uh, 2018, those were those, they thought they were their season was over. I remember coming off the sidelines and seeing guys that, you know, I played past three years with tears in their eyes and really uh, tore up about it. We got a flag here. Looks like it's going to be a false start. Okay, so that one's going to be on the center, Jeff Matthews. Yeah, but then to go in there and when they blocked that punt, return for the touchdown, thought we won, and then we had a kicker. Got to miss signals with Coach Debs there. Hit an onside kick instead of a squib kick and allow him sent to overtime. And just that whole game was just, just the thrill that last quarter. Probably the greatest game I've ever played in. Now here's East going Beautiful deep pass. down the middle. Drake in stride. They get another deep ball to Cameron Drake just like they connected in the first quarter. Looks like they're on the same page that time. You notice the ball was kind of going in the same direction as Drake. He's been... East has been trying to hit his back shoulder when Drake's been in stride, and that's dangerous if they can get that going. Over the top of Kevin Chrisis. Gosh, he's got breakaway speed, just Cameron Drake. Yes, he does. Got those long legs. He uh, can really get down the field. Hurdler, I believe, on their track yeah, team. Yeah, that's too. right. He and Cody Gustafson are both on the track team. Gustafson is uh, a jumper, and that one's over Drake, but... It's, it's funny because, as we've talked about, Drake and Gustafson are the two guys who get the most targets. Gustafson gets the most love because of the numbers. But we haven't seen many targets to Cody Gustafson tonight, and we've seen East really trust Drake with the deep ball, and he's had him a few times. He has, and it's just one of those things where Case obviously came out here, Coach Debs, well aware of Cody Gustafson, well aware of the type of player he is. So he wants to shut him down, and it just creates more holes for someone else. It's almost its almost exactly as cases where there's so much attention to Colt Morgan, it opens up holes for Mario and other receivers. East, deep, Gustafson, end zone, no sir. You know who else has really been held in check today? It's been Wesley Schools, who hasn't been in this series, probably trying to keep him healthy. They'll have Zach Trusky, the sophomore, in. Schools, 18 rushes, 65 yards. He has touchdown, but he's averaging just about three and a half yards per carry. That is not Wesley Schools-esque. No, you could tell that was a Spartan game plan. I believe last year his lowest rushing total was against us as well. So kudos to Coach Miller. Kudos to the guys playing on the interior in that box on that Spartan defense for really holding them check. Oh, That's picked off. Yes, sir, it is. Ten. Luke Bedell. Oh. 
Stepped right in front of Gustafson. Luke Waddell, I believe, came in as a receiver a couple years ago. Now his senior year, getting some playing time here in the fourth quarter, making a great play. Third career inter interception, his first of his career was against Grove City in 2017. Nice. That's kind the second pick by East tonight. Turn into an annual thing there for uh, Fidel. I'm talking about schools, though. Yeah, it, so you're right. It was, uh, it was actually the, the second lowest rushing total that schools had in a single game last year was against Case. He still had 104 <laughs> yards rushing, but that's, for Wesley schools, that's bottled up. Yes, that is. That's crazy how good he is, especially all these career stats Wesley Schools has accumulated when sometimes, the, especially earlier in his career, where they were behind in games, and he's still out there accumulating all these yards, you know, which is tough to do when you're down. It's really impressive. Mentioned this before. There are a few things you could talk about with Wesley Schools that are just kind of fun facts. One of them, he and R.J. Bowers have – between the two of them, the top 12 single game rushing performances in Grove City's in Grove City's history, Bowers has 10 of those. Schools has two, <laughs> but uh, if you leave out that nugget, then it's uh, it's a little bit more fun for Schools. The other one is coming into today. Schools not only leads the PAC in rushing yards. If you add up the total rushing yards by numbers two and three on that list. He still has more than the sum of numbers two and three as Tchaikovsky dives forward on third and one for the first down. And numbers two and three on that list are the running back and quarterback for Geneva, and they run the triple option. Yes, and they are running the ball basically 95% of the time they're on the field, and those two guys are touching it. So that is very impressive. Obviously, has a great career here i wish the best for him and fortunately got, got a little bottled up tonight but those numbers are just unreal i believe he was also if you mentioned he was one shy of the d3 uh carries a game record during their uh game 11 bowl game i think yeah. you want to call it yeah he had, he had he what 58 had, carries yeah 58 i think the record's 59 in the ecac championship bowl game the james lina bowl and uh, set a school record 359 rushing yards in that game sounds like something you do on madden <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a great career i you don't uh, as a spread running back outrun a triple option without being good yes <laughs> Second and seven from the 35 for Coolidge and company. Hand off Tarkovsky. Third down and be about five or six. As the second team offense here, if you're a first team guy on the sideline, what are you looking for to try to help the younger guys out? Uh, usually when Coach Slash would come over and say, all right, we're switching out, kind of just tell them what you saw. Um, what their tendencies are. I mean, obviously in the game, you pick up on things that you can't pick up on film, mainly because you get to use a couple of your senses and you actually get to block the guy. So you just give them a couple tips on uh, what's going on out there and how to play. But in reality, it's kind of like um, kind of like checking out of work on Friday, basically. You know, you pass on to whoever's coming in, <laughs> working the night shift maybe. You punch the clock, you go to the sidelines. This is your break time. This is the one from here till. Uh, tomorrow morning at films when you don't have to think about football where it's all over you came out you did what you wanted to do it's time to celebrate by the way I should mention a uh, couple of those runs by Jack McCray Tchaikovsky just came in but Jack McCray rushing the football number 23 for the Spartans here's Robertson Albrecht on the punt I believe that's his, the first punt of the night Caffrey will field the bouncer. And wrapped up. Let's see, for Albrecht, that is his, uh, his second punt of the night. But he hasn't been out there very often. 49-14 case with under nine to play in the fourth quarter. And it looks like we switched out our defense too. 
or Case's defense. See uh, Phil Wyatt in their nose tackle, former guard on the Spartan offense. And it appears Grove City has started to sub around. A few changes on that offensive line too. That's Lance Kleinfelter at center. And Cameron Roth is handing the ball off here to Zach Trusky, who's still in. You'd imagine that means that's it for Wesley Schools, right? I mean, yeah, there's no point. sense in running them, especially if you had a younger offensive line. And with this point in the game, it's probably just best to you know go off and get ready for next week. Honestly, no sense in risking an injury here. The mantra for Andrew DiDonato, the reigning PAC Coach of the Year and well-deserved, by the way, after his season last year, is brick by brick. He came into this program. They had gone 0-10 two years in a row. They went 0-10 his first year in 2016, 4-6 in 2017. Started what turned into a nine-game winning streak from last year to this year, going 8-3 eight, eight last year and culminating in that ECAC championship bowl win at the end of last year but brick by brick is the mantra where he wanted his guys at the start of his tenure to be focused on their vision for the program not their circumstance you'll hear him talk about that over and over again and as they stare down the barrel of another fourth down in a punting situation their circumstance right now is not very favorable but you'd imagine this kind of helps them clarify how they get to their vision in beating the big boys in this conference, and they've got a few more cracks in the next couple of weeks with W and J, CMU, and Westminster. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest things that separate uh, bad teams, bad organizations from good teams. Not bad and good from the record sure. standpoint, but from the quality of players. You don't show up one day and you and your team's great. It takes years years and day and day and brick by brick which i really like as yeah. a civil engineer i really like brick by brick that's how you, oh, build you know i stuff. didn't think about that yeah it was really i saw it in the notes i was like hey i, I kind of like that <laughs> or like uh reminds me of mountain unions uh saying by the Karis is uh it's it's good and it's grind out outstanding days i think it's good okay and you know that's just the mantra you have to be to be successful you're not going to be good by showing up no one has ever succeeded in anything by just showing up to a D3 football field and saying, I'm the best guy here and I'm going to win. Especially when, you know, the program might not be in the best place. And, you know, Case's program a couple years ago wasn't necessarily in the base, best place. When I committed here the year before, they were 3-7. and seven. And from that point on, in the next four years, we only lost seven games because that senior class saw that 3-7 and seven year and they said – no more of this. We want to be good, and we're going to do it the right way. And when you do things the right way, you really you grow a program and you create a legacy to leave behind. Guys like Aaron Weisberg, Jordan Esteban, and all those other guys from that great class, that great senior class when I was a freshman, really set the stage for what you're seeing today. Matt Boss, by the way, in a quarterback. Nolan Hogue on that, left, on that last give. Hogue, the freshman out of... Twinsburg, Ohio, and Blair Academy in New Jersey. And Boss, the junior out of East Aurora High School in New York. There's Hogue on the give. It'll be third and about five here. It's funny you talk about what the program was like when you committed to Case and what the record was before because it feels an awful lot like how these freshmen and sophomores must feel about Grove City looking back. And we talked about this before. As a guy personally who never saw those teams that were sub-500 at Case, mm -hmm. it's hard to think about this program as a losing program. And if you're a Grove City freshman or sophomore, it's probably really hard to think of Grove City as a team that put together three straight 0-10 seasons. Yes, and that's really just taught and passed on by your upperclassmen. That's where people talk about tradition and, oh, boss getting thrown over the pile there. It's boss <laughs> hours. Get ready, Matt. Um <laughs> Yeah, but that's why it's so important to have good upperclassmen and to have large senior classes. or well, not even large senior classes, just vocal senior classes to really show the young guys, hey, this is how it's done. And now, if you notice Case, Case does not have to play a lot of young guys. Let, you know, Most of their guys, sophomore, junior, senior, which allows those freshmen to come in here and really grow for that first year. I know when I was coming in, 
we were still playing freshman when I was a freshman, and the year before me was basically all freshmen out there on that field. And that that's really tough. And that's kind of like an investment in that first year to really grow those guys and get those guys that game experience. Because last year we weren't sure how the year was going to turn out. Oh, muff punt. Uh-oh. Who's got it? Casey's going to fall on it. That was picked up by Gabe Dory. It was Brendan Caffrey who couldn't handle the low punt. He tried to dive at it. You saw he had Mason G. Montgomery right in his grill, and Gabe Dory's the beneficiary. Was that Jack Williams getting down there too? Oh, Jack Williams, long snapper. He was probably, he's probably jealous of the freshman picking up his uh, turnover. <laughs> he wanted it, huh? Yes. I know, I'm know. i for a fact he did. You guys want your hands on the football whenever you can. As much as possible. I, I, I can't tell you. I've had quite a few dreams where I was like, there was a crossing route and the ball got tipped and it ran right in my hands. <laughs> Next thing you know, I was scoring. But you can see Jack down there, the high five and Victor and Josh Klopp. But it was oh, just boy. a dream, huh? It was only a dream. So close. Ryan Coolidge. Oh, former triple option quarterback Coolidge is. Plays like a tough kid. Now Boss is coming back in. Boss hours. Boss hours? Boss hours. That's what we call when Matt Boss gets in. Boss hours. Why is that? Has a nice little ring to it. A couple stories from our uh, trip over to Europe about Boss hours. That's where we got the name of it, but great time. Matt Boss, outstanding kid. I believe he's a finance major. Really does whatever the team asks him to do. Runs a scout team, which isn't which can never be too fun. Oh. Out wide for Tchaikovsky. He gets forced out of bounds, but a nice little jaunt for Kyle Tchaikovsky before he's pushed out by Parker Kilgore. Under four minutes to play in this one. Case up big, 49-14. It's a first down from the 12-yard line. We mentioned Grove City growing this program, by the way, and that brick by brick mantra they have. You can see the red stripe going down their helmet is supposed to be like brick. It is. Uh, Actually, it's really cool. Yeah, it's uh, like a little brick style. You can take a look at it right there, like red brick. Their campus is all red brick buildings as well, which is part of uh, part of what plays into that slogan. And uh, Andrew DiDonato, a Grove City grad, 2010. Perfect guy, Greg Debelak says, to take this program and run with it. Yes, he is, especially being a grad. Knows the type of kids he's getting, knows the culture there, kind of what they're, uh, what they're like outside of football. Sure. So, because sometimes it can be tough coming into a place where – you don't know what the kids are like when you don't have them with you. So, oh, pass. high snap, tip to McCray. He's gonna take it out wide. Little stiff arm, not enough. Cameron Good knocks him down, but <laughs> that's is that gonna go down as a handoff? I think sure. it might have been a direct snap, maybe. <laughs> that's the guys in the room. What two our two to our left? That's gonna be. That's going to be their decision. That's going to be on them. Bit above my pay grade. Mine too. John Schwartz, Case SID, what do you got? Third and four from the six, under two to play. And Ooh. Boss was going to keep that one. Didn't work out. See, that's where that constant outside linebacker blitzing comes in and kind of hurts you. It kind of works out, basically, when you're not used to seeing it. Now, these guys, unfortunately, I mean, they're prepared. This backup's prepared. But they spent the whole week running Grove City's offense. They were pretending to be Wesley Schools and all that, and they're not used to uh, – they're, they're they, they didn't take the reps that the Stars were able to take against those looks. That was Nick Gray back in on that. He and Curtis Fryermuth, the freshman – Greyback is a sophomore, have been hard charging all night from outside linebacker. Albrecht on the field goal attempt, his first of the night, and it is true. 
So Case tacks on three more. They are above the 50 point mark tonight. And with 105 to go in this ball game, Case up big on their home opener from Cleveland. Anova Living is a modern, amenity-rich residential community located in Cleveland's Greater University Circle neighborhood, offering studio, one, and two-bedroom apartment homes. Enjoy all-inclusive living with convenient on-site shopping, 24-hour concierge services, a 24-hour fitness center, resident lounge, and more. All within close proximity to Case Western Reserve University. Anova Living online at anovaliving.com. Well, Case tacks on three more on that field goal to get above the 50 point mark tonight. Make sure you stick around after the game for our post game show brought to you by the Courtyard Marriott at University Circle. And Steve's going to have your Rascal House player of the game get $3 off a medium large. Or Belly Buster Pizza when you present your football game ticket at Rascal House. Well, it is, uh, it's good to see that Zach Rogers is back returning this kick. Or excuse me, that uh, Marcus Woodford is back returning this kick after he was hurt last time. And you know, speaking uh -oh. of, that looks like it's MGM down on the sideline holding that right leg and That's unstrapping the, the helmet. That's not good. It's... Coming off the ACL injury last year, you don't like to see it. MGM, such a great kid, worked downtown at one of the major accounting firms over the uh, over the summer. Has really worked hard to get back. I was actually up at uh, Michigan State visiting my cousin, and ran into their head athletic trainer and brought up Mason Montgomery to me. <laughs> I never never thought I'd hear Mason Montgomery's name in that setting, but like I said, and he had a glowing review of Mason. Mason's such a great guy. And, it's tough to see him. Looks like it might just be a cramp, though, the way he's getting stretched out. Hopefully that's the case. They like him at DB and on special teams and running that kind of triple option at quarterback. By the way, Grove City changing personnel again here. This is Derek Joncor, who is in at quarterback for this last series. Last 20 seconds here tonight. Case is going to go to 2 and 0 on the year. Pick up their first conference win in their home opener. And Grove City's nine game winning streak that dates back to last year will come to a close. Case 52, Grove City 14 under the lights here at DeSanto Field in Cleveland.